Okay. All right. So welcome everyone. My name is Laura. I'm the chapter lead for Co Academy Seoul and welcome to this machine learning workshop for um, analyzing K-pop with Python and Spotify. Today is the first part of the workshop and we're going to be looking at Spotify's API. We're going to look at Spotify and we're going to do some, um, yeah, just a little bit of exploratory data analysis as well. I will be doing most of this one, whereas we also have Megana here. Megana's here as well. And Megana will be doing the second part of this workshop in August, possibly in September. We haven't quite zoned in on the dates yet. Okay. But um, just to give you a general sense of what we're doing today. So um, we will be going over the learning objectives and an overview as well as um, looking at the API. We're going to look at Spotify, very a punny name there. We're going to look at extracting the data and a bit of um, yeah, visualization and exploratory data analysis as well. So the objectives that we're looking at is using Spotify as a developer, using um, Spotify as a Python library. We're going to extract the data and we're going to explore the data as well. And just to give you a quick little preview before we go into the code editor. So we will look at um, Spotify's web API, how to access that. We're going to install Spotify we're going to extract the data and we're going to explore the data. So these are just um, quick little previews. Okay. And to now move on into the code editor, let me just have a quick look at the chat. Okay. Are there any questions before I go into the workshop? Anything you'd like to add? Somebody called Neha. Hi, Lakshmi. Nope. Not right now, maybe. If you do have any questions, Megana will keep an eye on the chat. And if you do have anything, do go ahead, put your questions in the chat, and we're going to have a look at it afterwards. So just to share the uh, good stuff, let's have a look. Okay. Okay, Megana, can I just um, ask you, is the editor visible. Can everyone see it? Yes, yes. Yeah, yep. yeah. Sounds good. We're okay. Good. Alrighty. Just to give you um, a quick little overview. So here we've got um, our workshop and part one being Spotify API, Spotify and EDA. So basically, we're looking at how to get the data and just to get a general sense of it. And uh, step one in what you want to do is we want to have a Spotify developer account and we want to log in following that. So just to um, uh, give you an idea, we're going to look at Spotify dashboard and then we're going to look at the dashboard and we need to create an application. And following that, we will get a client ID and a client secret as well. So just to show you that bit very briefly, Okay. Let me share my entire screen, maybe that'll be easier actually. Okay, so if we're over here, we're in the dashboard and we're going to developer.spotify.com and we're going to log in. Okay, wait. And what you can do is basically if you click on create an app, what it does is, so let's say test, and we just put a description, we put a name, we agree, and then we click create, like so. And then what it does is it gives us a client ID and it gives us a client secret. And uh, we need to take note of that. We're going to be using that in a minute. Okay. So once we've done that, okay, 
once we've done that, we can install Spotify, Spotify, sorry, Spotify, oh dear. We can uh, install Spotify and I've had a little look. So there are different ways of doing this. Um, you can say dash dash upgrade. It is optional, but it is recommended. And you can either do that in your notebook or you can um, also use that in your terminal or your command line. Um, the only thing that you would want to do then is just to leave off your percentage sign really. So we've done all that. It says, okay, requirement already satisfied. It just says that because I've already installed it previously. So once we've done that, um, we can import our libraries. We've got pandas, numpy, we've got um, seaborn and matplotlib. And um, we've also imported Spotify client credentials. And then what we can do next is we take our client ID and our client secret that we had from our web API earlier. So just to um, remind you, um, that's from over here, like so. And we are adding them in and we're also calling the client credentials manager. And then the next thing we can do is we find a Spotify playlist that we like. And we're also using the um, playlist ID, which is contained in the um, URL, basically. Yeah. So once we've done that, okay. And um, I need to be honest at this point. So when Megana and I were planning this meetup, um, I was writing a draft code to get the data from Spotify API. And the code that I had, it kind of worked, but it was also really, really ugly and really, really long. So I sent my version to Megana. I said, okay, Megana, can you have a look? Um, what do you think? And um, the next bit that you're going to see is actually Megana's code because it was objectively better. So all credit goes to Megana at this point. And what we have here is we have our user playlist tracks. We have a username and the playlist ID from up here. And that's basically just a little test run just to make sure that everything is working. And then what we do is we create a data frame with our audio features as columns. So that is what we're interested in is the audio features of each K-pop track. And also, um, the regular API just, excuse me, the regular API just allows you to use 99 tracks. But Magana actually figured out a nifty little trick that lets you um, bypass that. We're going to have a look at that in a minute. So first of all, we're having the playlist features. So all the information that we want. So we want the artist, we want the album name, we want the track name and the ID. And then we have these things um, that are contained in the audio features. And I will explain what they are in a minute. We have things like danceability, energy. We have the key, the loudness, the mode, the speechiness, the instrumentalness, the liveness and balance. Um, we have tempo, duration and time signature. And I will go into each of these in a second. And here's a code to extract the data, basically. So we have our playlist. We have our playlist features. And we are creating an empty data frame here. And the columns are um, these playlist features up here. And then what we do next is we um, get the playlist tracks by user. And we're going to get all the data that is associated with each track. And we don't want every bit, we only want certain parts. So we are looping through each track in each playlist. And we're adding in, uh, the information into an empty features dictionary. So first we're grabbing um, the metadata. So we're having artist, album, the name and the ID. And then after we get the audio features. Okay. And we're adding that the, into the data frame bit by bit. And then we're, um, we're, we're not merging, we're using um, the concat method to add each 
data frame bit to the new data frame. And just to make sure that everything is working, okay? So we've got the artist, we've got the album, track name, ID, and then we've got all that um, data that we're interested in. And let me just... Uh, da, 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 da. So we've got um, danceable... Oh, oh. We've got danceability, energy, key, etc., all in the data frame. But, okay, as mentioned, um, so the regular API just allows um, to get 99 tracks in one go. But um, Megana actually came up with this little bit here. So um, as long as there is another track, as long as there is um, uh, a next result in the results section, then it'll skip to the next one. So you will actually get the full track list. And doing that and um, using the same code as before, do, 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 do. Um, so we're, we're returning the whole playlist, not just the 99 tracks that Spotify allows us. And if we then have a little look here, it'll give us the final data. And if you have a look here, it gives us the complete data frame. And that is, so before we only had um, 99 rows and now we have um, 306 rows, 307 including the column. Okay, so our data is now complete. And now what we can do is we can actually explore the data. And on Spotify, there is a documentation reference for each audio feature. So danceability um, refers to how danceable a track is and um, on, a, on a range from zero to one. And if the closer it is to one, the more danceable it is. And then energy is intensity and activity, for example, how fast and loud and noisy it is. So um, the closer it is to one, the more energy there is. Um, the next bit are keys. And keys are integers ranging from minus one to 11. And they map to pitches. For example, zero is C. Then we have loudness and decibels. And it goes from 60 to zero. And I've had a look. So zero apparently is, our, is your regular hearing threshold, as long as you're healthy. And 60 decibels is a normal conversation. But again, the sound probably depends on how, um, yeah, how, how you put your volume, to be honest, on your speakers or headphones or whatever outlet you're using. Um, the mode is either major or minor, the modality of the track. So you can have, I don't know, C minor or C major, major I guess. That's possible. Then there is an audio feature called speechiness, and that looks at spoken words. So, for example, um, if, if it's a track that is just being sung, it's going to be closer to zero. If it's an audiobook, it is going to be closer to one. For example, a podcast that is probably going to be closer to one on that scale. Then we have something called instrumentalness. So that will describe whether or not a track has vocals. Um, the closer it is to um, the closer it is to one, the more instruments there are. So the the more likely it is that the track will be. Um, instruments only, no singing. Liveness detects presence of an audience. So for example, clapping or cheering, that kind of thing. And if it's above 0 0.8, it means that it's probably going to be live. If we look at valence, valence describes the general positivity. So if it's a quite angry or depressed track, it's going to be closer to zero. zero. If it's closer to one, it's going to be happy and cheerful. Tempo is the speed or the pace. It's represented as a float number. Duration in milliseconds is, well, how long the track is in milliseconds, quite straightforward. And then we have something called time signature. And one sec. Hmm. It describes um, how many beats there are per bar. And just to have a look at some visuals now as well to get a better idea of the data. Um, when I input the data for visualization, I chose box plots. 
and Megana asked me why I did that. So the reason why I like box plots for this project in particular is the little box shows us where 50% of the data are present. And the line shows where the median um, where the median is, and the median is the middle point of the order data. Oh, just one sec. Okay. Then the box edges are the first and the third quartiles, and the dots and the diamonds are outliers. So again, just to look at that. So the box is 50% of the data. The line is the median. These edges are the first and the third quartile. And then if you have a look, there are also little dots and diamonds down here, right? They are the outliers. And the whiskers, they include most data. And usually they extend to the point that is closest to 1.5 times the interquartile range. So these, these whiskers here. Okay. And to look at the code. So um, for the box plots, I didn't actually visualize all of them um, using box plots, box plots. I only picked danceability, energy, key, loudness, speechiness, liveness, balance, tempo, and duration for reasons that will become clear in a minute. Okay. So this um, code loops through the data frame and displays each feature. So if we have a little look, danceability, um, the median point is at 0 0.7. So it's definitely closer to one. So we can probably gather that um, K-pop songs tend to be quite danceable. And then if we look at the next feature, we've got energy. So the energy is up here. Again, it is maybe 0 0.84 is the median. And um, most of the data, the interquartile range is quite high up as well. So we're presuming that the songs are quite high energy. A couple of outliers, maybe there are some ballads in the data set as well. Then if we look at the keys, so the keys, um, if you remember, they map to pitches. We've got a range of keys. We've got um, two, uh, well, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, mostly. Um, then we have the loudness which is, well, around maybe three to five decibels. But again, depends on what you use as your outlet for your um, songs. Um, if we have a look at speechiness, so that's quite interesting, actually. So the speechiness is quite low, meaning that there is probably a lot of singing going on in the songs. However, when we look, there's a lot of outliers up here. And I'm thinking perhaps that is due to all the rap parts. I feel like Korean pop music has a lot of rap bits as well. Possibly. That's just, just what I'm seeing, looking at the data for now. Then we have liveness. So again, quite a few outliers. Maybe there are some live songs as well. But generally speaking, though, the songs are quite low in liveness. So probably going to be recorded data uh, sorry, recorded songs more than anything else. Then we have balance. Balance meaning good energy, um, positive vibes, relatively high. Although we do have a whisker that extends quite low, so maybe there are some sad songs as well in the um, sample. But generally, though, 0 0.6, just a little bit over that, being the median point, we can probably assume that most K-pop songs are going to be quite happy, happy little numbers. Okay. Then tempo, the median being at 120, so it is going to be quite relatively fast, not super fast, but it's going to be faster than, well, it's going to be faster than your resting heart rate. Then we have duration in milliseconds, and we're looking at roughly 200,000 milliseconds per song. And that is quite narrowly defined, actually, which I found interesting. And I remember watching an interview with a, um, oh, who was it? Oh, somebody working for Spotify, and they were saying that streaming has affected music in the sense that nowadays songs are a certain length, 
just because people don't really have that massive attention span anymore. So that has also um, affected the way songs are written and streamed. Then we're going to look. At, we're going to look at the mode. So that is is it going to be either major or minor, and it's not that different to be honest. So songs can be in minor or major mode. Quite similar. And then we have. Let me see. Okay, then we're looking at time signature, and that was how many beats per bar. And overwhelmingly, it's four beats per bar, which I find quite interesting. And then lastly, we have instrumentalness. And um, if we look at it, so it's basically a song that definitely has vocals. And if you have a look, there's only maybe one or a couple of outliers up there. But generally speaking, we're looking at songs that are very very low in instrumentalness that definitely have um have vocals in them so uh, now that we've done that just a quick little summary so according to what we have at hand which is a track list of popular k-pop songs um so k-pop is danceable cheerful fast loud and happy uh, the keys that we often see are d e f g can be major can be minor uh, in terms of loudness can be three to five decibels roughly we have songs that are not very speechy but we have a lot of outliers so there will be more singing than talking but maybe due to rap parts it is possible that there are a lot of outliers for that reason cable songs will be recorded in a studio and the range for beats per minute seems to be roughly 105 to 140 beats per minute and I looked it up, the resting heart rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. So we could possibly gather from this that K-pop is going to be energizing, stimulating. Um, we have roughly 200,000 milliseconds, which is roughly three minutes. Um, if we look at the box, we're looking at songs that are maybe two and a half to three and a half minutes long. Um, we have four beats per bar and they definitely have vocals. Okay, so these are just the preliminary conclusions that we can gather. And yeah, I think we're good for now. So I just wanted to say thanks for attending. Thanks for your time. And I'm just going to have a look at the chat if there are any questions at all. Okay, let's have a look. What machining, machine learning tool, tools will we use? Is there anything different or specific to music and speech recognition? Okay. Okay. Right, Magana, yeah. Um, maybe that's a question for you. What machine learning tools are you planning on using? Anything different? Well, as of now, tools, mm -hmm. tools, um, maybe, maybe Python obviously python but again we have to look into the data that we have so we could start off by looking at the features and then maybe train our data on the different features that you just mentioned like danceability and stuff and um, once we've trained our data we can sort of apply different models different algorithms like random forest and stuff and see which model would give us the best or closest answer. And by the time we hopefully go to this workshop, we will have um, more data to work on. Mm -hmm. So oh, any... oh, sorry, yeah, I guess that would be. Mm. No, no, please go ahead. Are there any libraries that you're planning on using in particular? I think it will just be the same. Uh, um, we will be using the Skisset Learn. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Yet. Mm -hmm. or is it psychic yeah so i'm looking into that yeah right okay okay sounds good and um to those attending if you have any sort of idea about machine learning and you want to sort of work together please do reach out any questions that you want to solve yeah mm -hmm. okay 
I'm just going to stop recording and um, maybe we can take a couple more questions. Okay, so stopping recording in three, two, one.